Hello everyone, this is Serious Trivia, and today we're continuing with our Trivia Let's Talk lore series. Last episode, we left off with Zhou Yu blacking out as he realized the wind conditions prevented them from using their planned fire attack against Cao Cao. As he was carried back to his tent for medical treatment, Zhou Yu can't help but to cough up blood as everything he has planned so far seems to be for naught. Seeing that Zhou Yu has suddenly fallen ill, Lu Su quickly sailed out to Zhuge Liang's boathouse to inform him of this development. Zhuge Liang smiles and tells Lu Su to not worry as he knows exactly what ails Zhou Yu and not only that, he can cure Zhou Yu in no time. Hearing this, Lu Su quickly invites Zhuge Liang to head out towards Zhou Yu's tent as not a moment can be lost. As they arrive at Zhou Yu's tent, Lu Su tells Zhou Yu that he has brought Zhuge Liang who has said that he can cure him. Zhou Yu welcomes Zhuge Liang in, and the two exchange some pleasantries before Zhuge Liang cuts into the matter at hand and asks Zhou Yu how come he has fallen ill so suddenly, as just yesterday he seemed perfectly healthy. Zhou Yu responds cryptically that people's fate can be unpredictable as the weather. Zhuge Liang chuckles and replies, indeed, man cannot possibly guess the ways of the heavenly wind. Hearing this, Zhou Yu's ear perked up as Zhuge Liang continued, This is clearly an illness caused by all the stress that have been blocked on your heart. Zhou Yu replies, The medics has already given me heart medicine, but it has not shown any effect. Zhuge Liang continue, Well, it's because the flow of your body has not gone the correct way. At this point, Zhou Yu knows that Zhuge Liang already knows about the wind issue, and is merely teasing him by dropping all these puns about flows and winds. So Zhou Yu cuts Zhuge Liang off and asks him, what's his medicine? Zhuge Liang says, the treatment is a secret. I can only write it for you to see. Zhou Yu quickly empties the room and brings Zhuge Liang a piece of paper. On the paper, Zhuge Liang writes the following 16 words. Yu po cao gong, yi yong huo gong. This translates to, to beat Cao Cao, it's best to use fire, everything is ready except for the east wind. Zhuge Liang shows this to Zhou Yu and tells him that this is the source of his illness. Zhou Yu nods and asks him if he also knows a cure. Zhuge Liang nods and tells Zhou Yu that he happens to know a way to plead with the heavens for a change in the weather. But to plead with the heavens, he needs an altar to be built on the top of a nearby mountain called Nanpingshan. The altar is called the Seven Star Altar, and it needs to be a certain size with three different levels. 120 men are also needed to man the altar day and night to wave the correct banners according to the constellations for three whole days. So starting on November 20th, I will start performing my magic, and by November 22nd, you will have your east wind. Zhou Yu immediately orders 500 men to help Zhuge Liang construct the altar and to have enough men to be on enough shifts so that 120 men can be constantly on the altar to wave the banners. So Zhuge Liang takes his leave as he instructs the soldiers how to construct this altar. The base level is a giant circle constructed using piles of soil from the southeastern region of the mountain. The diameter of this base level is measured at roughly 55 meter and it's 7 meters tall. Around this base level, 28 different banners representing the 28 mansions, which is a Chinese constellation system as shown here, is erect around this structure. Then a second level is built on top of this first level that is also 7 meters high. And on this level, 64 banners representing 64 gua, which is a Taoism principle, are also erect. Lastly, a final third level, which is also 7 meters high, is placed on top of the second level. On this level, the floor is subdivided into the four cardinal directions of east, south, west, and north. And at the highest point in the center of this level is a place for Zhuge Liang to conduct his ritual. After the construction was completed, Zhuge Liang bathed himself clean and started a fast to cleanse his spirit as he stepped onto the altar starting on November 20th. 
From that point on, Zhuge Liang would climb the altar three times a day to perform an hour-long ritual each time before stepping down to rest in a tent nearby. Meanwhile, Zhou Yu has recovered quite a bit as Zhuge Liang's promise of the east wind has soothed his heart, so he got busy preparing everyone into position as they awaited for the east wind. For Huang Gai, whose surrender will kick off the battle, 20 fast ships were prepared, rams were installed on the front of the ship, and the halls were filled with dry firewood and fish oil. On the decks of the ship, Huang Gai also placed jars of sulfur and other fire starters, and for double security, a blue cloth soaked in oil was also placed to cover the whole ship. For Gan Ning and Kan Zhe, they spent the days waiting by drinking with Cai Zhong and Cai He to keep an eye on them as they ensured radio silence before the big day. Meanwhile, at the same time, Sun Quan, who has been spending this time recruiting a reserve troop back in Chaisang, has also sailed up to a location close to Zhou Yu's camp as they awaited the signal for the final assault. With everyone and everything ready, all eyes turned to Zhuge Liang's ritual to borrow the east wind. As the third day came around, everyone looked at the banners in the camp to see if the winds had changed directions, but none of the flags were waving as there were no winds at all. Zhou Yu turned to Lu Su and asked him if he thinks Zhuge Liang can truly ask the heaven for the east wind. Lu Su replies, hopefully he can. At least so far, we have no reason to doubt him as he has delivered on all his promises, so let's give him a bit more time and wait. Sure enough, three hours later, in the middle of the night, the sound of flapping banners sounded throughout the camp. Zhou Yu and all the generals quickly jumped out of their beds as they raced outside of their camps to see, and sure enough, a huge gust of southeasterly winds was roaring, and all the banners now pointed towards Cao Cao's camp. In this moment of excitement, Zhou Yu's mind turned to another matter, as Zhuge Liang is now no longer of any use to him. Zhou Yu thought of all the times Zhuge Liang had outsmarted him and decided that he must be killed now. So he summons generals Ding Feng and Xu Sheng. Zhou Yu tells Ding Feng to take a hundred men and run to Nanping Shan right now. Don't ask any questions and bring me back Zhuge Liang's head. To Xu Sheng, Zhou Yu also orders him to bring a hundred men and sail down the river toward Zhuge Liang's location to prevent him from escaping by water. As Ding Feng's men arrived at the altars first, they searched for Zhuge Liang, but he was nowhere to be seen, so he asked the troops there if anyone had seen Zhuge Liang. Soldiers reported that Zhuge Liang has just left the altar moments ago, so he must be nearby. So as Ding Feng searched, Xu Sheng also arrived by river, and one soldier back at the dock reported that a small ship had been waiting and docked there since yesterday, and that Zhuge Liang was just seen entering the small craft as they sailed downstream. The two generals quickly combined their forces, entered their boats as they hoisted full sail to try to catch up with Zhuge Liang. Soon, they spotted a small ship ahead and cried out to Zhuge Liang to stop. Zhuge Liang stepped out on the docks and yelled back, Go back and tell Zhou Yu to not waste this wind and win the war at hand. But Ding Feng and Xu Sheng continued to give chase. Then another man stepped out of the docks of Zhuge Liang's ship and yelled, I am Zhao Yun. Because we're allies, I will spare your lives. But if you continue to chase, then I will have no choice. As Zhao Yun said this, he fired a warning shot from his bow and hit the ropes that hoisted the sail of the lead ship of Ding Feng and Xu Sheng's chase group. As Ding Feng and Xu Sheng's ship's sail snapped and fell down, Zhuge Liang's ship hoisted their sails and broke away from the chase. Ding Feng and Xu Sheng looked at each other and both agreed to stop chasing as Zhao Yun's heroism at Changban has made quite a name for himself. So they turned back and reported to Zhou Yu. Zhou Yu is obviously bitter about this, but Lu Su comforts him that everything can wait until they beat back Cao Cao. So Zhou Yu turns back to the battle at hand and starts assigning everyone to their battle positions. So here's a detailed map of Chibi, and I'm going to go over all of Zhou Yu's assignments on this map, so bear with me for a moment as we get familiar with everyone's starting positions. To start, here are everyone's positions. At Chibi, Cao Cao is encamped on the north bank in a heavily forested area called Wuling. To his south, Zhou Yu is encamped on the southern bank. Farther northwest, also on the north bank of the Yangtze River, is Xiakou. 
and Liu Bei and Liu Qi's armies are encamped here as they hold on to this last stronghold in the Jin province. And we see farther east a Chai Sung is Sun Quan's garrison, but at this time he had already sailed down with Wu's reserve forces to a location in between Liu Bei and Zhou Yu as he awaited for Zhou Yu's signal for the final assault. Now we have a basic understanding of the map, let's continue. First, Zhou Yu commanded Gan Ning to take Cai Zhong with him but leave Cai He in camp and march his entire battalion on foot toward Cao Cao's camp. Everyone in the battalion should be dressed in Cao Cao's unit's colors as they were going to act like they were surrendering. Next, Tai Shi Ci is summoned and he is given 3,000 men to head east to Huangzhou. Although this is not part of the battle at hand, he will play a critical role in holding back any potential reinforcement from Hefei, which is the Cao Cao stronghold at the right corner of the map. Next, Lu Meng will take another 3,000 men and trail behind Gan Ning's main forces. As soon as Huang Gai starts the fire in the docks, they will run up to Cao Cao's encampment on land and also start fires everywhere. Next is Ling Tong, who is given another 3,000 men. Their task is to sail past Cao Cao's encampment and head for Yi Chang to cut off Cao Cao's reinforcement from that direction and to corral their escaping troops. Next is Dong Xi, who will also take 3,000 men to cross from Liu Bei's territory and head farther north to cut off Cao Cao's shortest escape route back north. Lastly, Pan Zhang is given another 3,000 men to follow behind Dong Xi's men and help out whenever needed. With all the land forces deployed, Zhou Yu turns to the main course, Huang Gai and the navy. Huang Gai will send a messenger right away to Cao Cao's camp to inform him that later that night, he will have the surrender that he was waiting for, as they will take 20 ships filled with supplies to surrender to Cao Cao. But in reality, Huang Gai will lead their 20 fire ships to ram into Cao Cao's dock, where all the linked ship platforms are docked and light Cao Cao's entire navy on fire. Behind Huang Gai will be four full naval battalions led by Han Dang, Zhou Tai, Jiang Qin, and Chen Wu. Each of them will have 300 ships with 20 ships specialized for fire attack as well, and they will charge in right after Huang Gai starts the attack, and they will land and push into Cao Cao's encampment on land. Zhou Yu and Chen Pu will command everything from their command ship, and Sun Quan's reserve forces will act as everyone's backup whenever he is needed. With Wu ready, we turn back to Zhuge Liang as he makes his way back to Liu Bei's camp with the help of Zhao Yun. Immediately, Zhuge Liang starts to deploy their men as well. First, Zhao Yun will take 3,000 men and ambush around the north side of Wuling and wait for Cao Cao's routing forces as the fire starts. Then he summons Zhang Fei, ask him to take another 3,000 men as well to ambush a bit farther west. Zhuge Liang tells Zhang Fei to be patient and wait till the next morning when Cao Cao's tired men stop to start cooking breakfast, then charge out. Lastly, Zhuge Liang tells Mi Zhu, Mi Fang, and Liu Feng to take their men to capture routing troops and gather abandoned supplies. With everyone assigned, Zhuge Liang asks Liu Qi to sail to Wu Chang to hold this key port as he and Liu Bei will follow Su to a nearby location as well to watch the fireworks from afar. Just as Zhuge Liang finished to assign everyone, Guan Yu steps out angrily and asks Zhuge Liang why he had forgotten to give him an assignment. To find out why Zhuge Liang had forgotten about Guan Yu, come back tomorrow as we continue our lore series.